it's been a month since I did the video for updating the SuperCat battery from the trunk to the front of the car in the hood and we shrinkified it. So today's video, since it's been about a month or so, it's been running great. I want to show you the final setup for the display I did and show it in the engine bay itself. I'll pop it open again real quick and I also have a quick video that I'll put in later on for when it got really cold like I think it was like two degrees Fahrenheit and I started it up and I'll show you exactly how good this thing does in cold weather so let's move up to the actual display and show you that real quick and then we'll get to the hood okay and here is the display you can see it's running perfectly fine now of course the battery is down to 12.5 volts because I have not started the car for a day and I also have the doors open. You can see I'm pulling about 1.7 amps from the batteries just having all the interior lights on. So let's go ahead and start the car. Let's see if I can do this at the same amount here. So. You see it running perfectly fine. Then again, you can see today's, it's actually 46 degrees outside right now. That battery's still warming up inside the engine compartment. So now that you see that this runs perfectly fine here, let's show you a quick clip of when it was two degrees Fahrenheit. And then we'll go back to the engine bay. Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, January 7th, 2018. And this is about as cold as it ever gets in Delaware. It is should be 3 or 4 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So let's give this a shot. Let's unlock the car. Okay. Let's see what the battery says. Okay. They're saying 8 or 7 degrees, but yeah, it's probably about 3. So never even drop below 11 volts. Fully recharged and running already. And it's actually two degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. That's how good it is. Back up to the display. You see it run perfectly fine. It's happy. So here it is in the engine bay. You can see I've actually taken out the original battery again still. There's no more really thick blue wire that used to run to the trunk. And here's my box. And you can see it's actually a little dirty after sitting in the car for a month. And I basically have it set down with bungees. Yes, I love bungees. And it makes it real easy. And this unit is not going anywhere. I can really drive like a nut and I don't have to worry about going anywhere. The ground is hooked right up to the side here. And positive is right over here. I do have a piece of cardboard right now because I don't want the positive to touch the metal frame for the computer. I do need to improve that a little bit, but basically this is done. There's just a few little things I need to do. So let's pop off the bungees real quick, take a look inside and just show you it has not changed since the last video. So get this air filter out of the way. There's one. I hope that one will good. There we go. One and two. Let's get these out of the way for a moment. And let's pop it open. There's one clip. Two clips. And I gotta angle it a little bit. But there you go. There's the whole unit perfectly fine. The resistor, the two strings of capacitors underneath here, my battery. The DC DC converter, so I can run the uh, monitoring soft hardware, and there's the uh, uh, the microcontroller sitting right there on the side. So everything is perfect, and it's still dry in here. That's the big thing. It is still dry. It's not going to attack any of the electronics whatsoever. Yeah, it is perfectly dry. There is no water anywhere. Now again, as I said before. No one actually has to do this monitoring and make it massively complicated if you don't want to. All you need is a good case to protect the unit itself. You need the battery, the capacitors, and the charge limiting and discharge limiting resistor. And you have a working system. You don't need all this extra stuff. That's just for me. 
Okay, so design-wise, I'm pretty much going to call this project done. The design works perfectly fine. The implementation works pretty good. The only thing I might change is the way the uh, power comes out of the units. Those little round regular uh, battery connectors don't like to grip on too well. So I might end up actually bringing the wire straight out and just directly connecting the wires. But that's inconsequential for the main design of the unit. It is done. Basically, all you need is super caps, a lithium iron phosphate battery, usually around 10 amp hours for a regular four cylinder you might want to go bigger if you got an eight cylinder or definitely bigger if you have a diesel um, and a current limiting charge and discharge resistor in between the battery and the super caps so this way you don't overstress the lithium iron phosphate remember the super caps are supposed to be doing most of the work the battery is just there to handle the parasitic loads so usually around a tenth of an ohm is great uh, if you have any other questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Otherwise, the only other videos I'm going to do on this is maybe six months and one year just for a longevity test. And it'll be a two or three minute quick video saying, hey, it still works or oh crap, something went wrong.